In this video tutorial, we are going to go through and start setting up Linux Ubuntu for Java development. Now, one of the first things that we need to do is install the JDK. And the first step of that is going to be downloading that from Oracle. So we need to go to Oracle's website, uh, sign into their site. So if you don't have an Oracle account, you'll need to create one through this process. But I'll go through step by step and show you my account, how we sign, find, find it on the Internet, uh, which version to take. And we'll go through and download the Oracle Java development kit and get that downloaded now. Now in Ubuntu, and I just want to come over here to Firefox, and you can use whatever browser you'd like to, to use. I'm just going to use Firefox since it's already installed. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to search for Oracle JDK 11. And here I want to go to the Java SE Development Kit Downloads. Click on that and come up here and I want to say accept the license agreement and then come here and I want this uh, tar GZ edition. So I'm going to click on that. Norco is going to take me over here to the sign on screen. I'm going to enter in my Oracle account. And if you don't have an Oracle account already, you'll need to create one and go through that process. I've had a, this Oracle account for some time. And I'm just going to click sign in. Don't save that. And here, what you want to do is save the file. So I'm actually going to say do that automatically. Don't open it up with the archive manager. That can cause you some headaches. We actually want to be working with this archive. So just say uh, save the file. I'm going to click OK. And that's going to take a, a few moments to download in the background. Once we have the Java installer downloaded to our system, we need to run it and have it install the Java JDK on our system. So to complete the Java installation, what we want to do is come over to the terminal and click on Show Applications and take the terminal. And the first thing that we need to do is create a directory. So we've downloaded the JDK, but we want to use the app installer to uh, actually do the installation. So we need to do sudo. We're going to copy it over to cache minus p var cache jdk11 installer dash local net miss the make dir so sudo is going to run it as root uh, we are making a directory minus p tells it to create anything that's missing along the way so we want var cache oracle jdk11 installer local and then we want to do sudo cp and we want to copy that into that. So I'm going from the downloads directory. So it's going to be downloaded to the downloads directory. There's the JDK. And now I want to say the slash var slash cache Oracle installer local. And if you're new to Linux to get everything to complete, I'm just hitting the tab key. The tab key is going to do a, an auto complete. So that copies it over. Now I want to do sudo add app. I want to add in this repository. It's going to be PPA colon Linux uprising slash Java. And you get a little bit of warning here. And I'm going to hit enter to accept that. And it's going to go through and do the installation of this tool to help us install the Java application. Now we want to do an update. Get update. Next, we want to do sudo app install Oracle Java 11 installer local. We get a warning about the disk space. I'm going to say yes, continue. Now, this is going to go take from that uh, archive file and it's going to be installing the Java files. And we must agree to the license. And here we need to hit tab to highlight the OK. And we are going to say yes, keeping Oracle's lawyers happy with our agreeing to the license and going through the acceptance process. And this is going to take another moment to uh, complete the installation. Now the last thing that we want to do is go ahead and make this Java installation our, our default. And the way we do that 
is going to be sudo app get stall oracle java 11 set default local like so and at this point java is now installed now the next thing that we need to do what just one more thing some java applications are going to be looking for an environment variable called java home so we need to set that up and here i'm going to start up a second terminal and when i say which java we can see that i, I get this user bin java but that is actually an alias so if i do ls slr a i'm going to say user bin java we can see that is that is actually a link so that beginning character on the line above my prompt that means that that is a link and that is pointing to etsy alternative java so let's do the same thing on that. So we're going to look at Etsy, Alternatives, Java. And now we can see that is where the actual Java installation is. I'm going to go back to the top window. And here what I want to do is just a CD, make sure that I'm in my home directory. And if I do an ls minus ltra, a shows the hidden files. You can see that I do have a a bash rc so what i want to do is edit that file so i'm going to do a vi and some people prefer to use the, the bash underscore profile that's acceptable as well so i'm going to go ahead and edit my bash rc and here i'm going to hit o for insert a line i'm going to say export java underscore home equals and i, I want to do the slash usr slash lib lib jvm java dash 11 dash oracle and here I, I don't want to do the bin java i'm putting in the actual home directory of the java uh, jdk installation so that's exactly what i want there the bin folder is all the executables so it, we don't want to do that we do want to set exactly the Java home. So that does that. So I'm going to hit escape and do a WQ for right quit. I'm going to exit that. We'll exit this as well. And I could uh, bring that back in, but this is a, a little bit easier to make sure that Java home is persisting between sessions. So, and we got a, not a valid identifier. Oh, I see what I did. I have a dash there instead of a equal. So just edit that again. I'm going to hit X for delete. I for insert equals. Then WQ. Now we'll restart the terminal. That's better. No error message on startup. Now if I do an echo dollar sign java home we can see that the java home is now set now once java is installed on our system it should be available for our use i'm going to show you from the command line how we can verify that we do have the jdk installed properly and it's working and there are two java commands that we can use from the command line one is java just simple uh, java and we are going to do minus v to get the version of it and that will tell us that the java executable is available on our command line on our path so it tells us that java is installed the other command is java c so a java with a c at the end this is the java compiler and do a java c minus v for the version of it that will tell us that the java compiler is installed it's a, a pretty easy mistake to make to install just the java runtime the jre and not the jdk and if you have installed just the jre if you do Java C, you will get an error saying that Java C is not found. But if you've properly installed the Java JDK, Java C will exist and you'll get output from that. So by using Java, Java C minus V, that tells us the version of the Java compiler installed on the system. Now to verify that Java is properly installed, I'm going to come to the command line uh, terminal again. And here, I want to make sure that Java is installed, so I'm going to do Java minus version. I believe I might have said uh, minus V in the 
intro video, but it's actually version. And now that we, we can see, this is the Java runtime environment. So uh, this only tells me that the, a JRE has been installed on the system. Now I can do Java C minus version. And now I'm getting back the version of the Java compiler. So the existence of Java C on the system tells me that the JDK has been properly installed. So it's a very easy mistake to accidentally install a Java runtime environment and not the Java compiler. And if I had not installed that, if I did, I'll just do foo version of if that did not exist, I would get something like this. So I'd get told that Java C was not found. So in that case, you'd have to go back and install the proper JDK. But in this case, since Java C is there, whoop, helps to spell it right. <laughs> so there, there. Now we we know that is there. Now that the download is complete, we can run the installer, which is going to install IntelliJ onto our computer system here so that we can start using it. Now running in Ubuntu, what we do to install software, we just click on this, Ubuntu software, and I can come over here, click on this, and search for IntelliJ. And here you can see we've got uh, several different options, and I want the IDEA community, so I'm going to click on that, and then just say, install and we can see that's asking me for my password so I'll go ahead and give my password authenticate and now this is going to install in the background and this is going to take a few minutes for it to go through the installation process and I'll come back and show you the setup now the first time that you run IntelliJ it's going to come up and ask you some questions about how to set it up for your configuration I'm going to go through now and show you uh, some commonly selected stuff uh, some, some things you probably won't need, and we'll just go st uh, step through the uh, menu of options and get IntelliJ configured for your use. Now, once the installation process completes, I'll switch over to this launch button. I'm just going to go ahead and click on launch to start up IntelliJ from the application installer. And you see it took a second for it to come up. And if you have a previous installation, you can bring over settings. Here I don't have any, so I'm just going to click OK. And we need to confirm JetBrains privacy policy to accept their terms and keep their lawyers happy. We'll click continue there. And I normally uh, go ahead and send usage. Uh, these are anonymous statistics that uh, help JetBrains improve their product. So I'm going to go ahead and say send. And while that's launching, I'm going to go ahead and close this in the background. And here you have the UI theme. I like the dark yellow theme. There's also a light theme, and you can change this uh, at any time. So I'm going to just go ahead with good old dark yellow. The plugins, this is kind of important. If you have plugins that are running, it takes up uh, system resources, memory, and whatnot. If you don't need them, I, I say disable them. So I'm going to go through and show you the ones that I normally uh, utilize. So I'm going to come in here for build tools. I never use Ant, but I do use Maven and Gradle quite frequently. So I'm just going to disable AMP. Version control, I don't use these two here, but I do use Git and GitHub uh, quite often, so we'll enable those. And then for the testing tools, I use JUnit quite a bit. I used to use TestNG, but I haven't used that for a long time, so I'm going to disable that. And then the coverage tools, those are definitely nice to have installed. So I'll save those. Uh, Swing, I'm not a Swing designer. Don't do Android development either, so I'm going to disable those. Now, let's take a look at these miscellaneous tools. Uh, the bytecode viewer, these you want. I never use Eclipse, so I'm going to disable that. Uh, Terminal is handy. Java Stream Debugger and YAML, those are all good, good to have, so I'm going to go ahead and save those and go back now. Uh, plugin development. Plugin development, this is for developing IDE plugins. I don't need that, so I'm just going to go ahead and disable that. Uh, next, we can look at feature plugins. Uh, I'm not doing Scala development. Uh, I don't need this uh, for emulator. And then the features trainer, that's optional. If you want to go through that and take a look at that, uh, you can. If you're new to IntelliJ, it uh, might not be a bad idea to uh, try that. Now, I'm just going to go ahead down here in the lower right and say, uh, start using IntelliJ. Now, IntelliJ is starting up for the first time. And here I can say, uh, create new project. This will set up a new Java project. 
and it takes a second for it to initialize. And here you can see the different uh, projects that we can create. If you are using the Ultimate Edition, you're going to have additional options here. So I'm just going to say next here for a, a plain old Java project. And you can see here it's putting it in my user home idea projects. If you have a workspace directory you like to use, I'd uh, override it now. I'm just going to call this test project, like so. And I'm going to click finish. Now IntelliJ is going to go out and initialize that project. It does take it a second here. And we can see that the, the window's coming up and it is initializing a Java project for the first time. And you do get tips of the day. I'm just going to close that. And you can see two processes are down here. It's actually indexing uh, files right now, and that can take a second to run. So that's perfectly normal for starting up IntelliJ the first time. It's got some housekeeping tasks to take care of. But at this point, we have Java installed, we have IntelliJ installed, and we are all ready to start uh, developing Java applications.